Good afternoon, people. <clears throat> Excuse me, watch them at 65, Lisa Boyce. I'm going to give you a verse of scripture. It's out of Matthew 11:28. 28. It says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Matthew 11:28. Rest for the weary. Someone just wrote me and Wanted to argue with me about once saved, always saved. I think it's a little late for that now. You don't get it by now, then uh, you need to get saved before it's too late. Once saved, always saved is the gospel. Let me give you the gospel. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Christ shed his blood for all of our sins, past, present, and future, was buried and rose again on the third day according to scripture. We are saved by grace through faith in Christ alone Period. Not of ourselves, not of works, least any man should boast. It is grace, something we didn't earn, something we don't deserve, that God gave his only begotten son that whosoever, you and I are whosoever, believe in him, will not perish, but have eternal life. How do you come to that? You admit you're a sinner in need of Christ. The moment you put your faith and trust in Christ and his blood for all of your sins, the moment you accept him as Savior, not only are you saved, but you're justified by the blood of Jesus, rapture ready, which is going to happen at any time, and sealed until the day of redemption, which means you cannot and will not lose your salvation. I wish these people would get the meaning of sealed. That means God will not take away what you did not earn. It's amazing how people are just nitpicking every little thing nowadays. And it is just unbelievable. We got all this going on right now and you want to nitpick about what's about salvation. When it's crystal clear. And you know who I'm talking about because you just wrote me. Yeah. The Holy Spirit will indwell in you. The Holy Spirit will lead you, guide you. The Holy Spirit will minister to you. The Holy Spirit will change you. That's what he does. I have a cat in a hat coming in right now. Okay, so he's right there and he's confused. He's looking at what to what to do. We got I got several um, articles from War News. This one is the latest. It's a direct threat from Putin. I knew it was coming. Russian President Vladimir Putin made a <laughs> surprise intervention warning. The U.S. not to expand the war in the Middle East region in an effort to protect Iran and Syria. Allies. Putin revealed that he ordered a 24-hour patrol of a MiG, MiG-31 aircraft carrying a Game Changer Unstoppable Mach 10 a Kenzal missile. Things just ramped up big time now. It is noted that the Kenzal's primary target is the American aircraft carriers. In this particular case in the eastern Mediterranean. Earlier Putin was spotted walking around. Listen to this very carefully. He was spotted walking around with a nuclear briefcase in China. State television showed rare footage of him during his visit in Beijing, accompanied by naval, Navy officers carrying a so-called nuclear code bag that can be used to order a nuclear strike. <sighs> Welcome to World War III. The church is about to go home. This is not the time to be arguing about once saved, always saved, to be arguing about anything else but keeping your eye on that sky for the Lord. I'm serious. Vladimir Putin once again condemns the support of the Dopey administration on the Israeli side, stating that all these actions lead to further escalation, while he went even further by issuing veiled threats. I ordered the Russian aerospace forces to begin permanent patrols in the neutral area of the Black Sea airspace. 
It says our MiG-31 aircraft are armed with Kinzhal missile systems and will begin patrolling the Black Sea. These missiles have a range of more than a thousand kilometers. Putin said after the U.S. sent powerful aircraft carriers to the Mediterranean in support of Israel. This is not a threat, but an attempt to maintain control of the situation in the Mediterranean, he said. Putin clearly fears the situation could get out of control already before Egypt and Jordan threatened Israel not to go ahead with plans to expel 2.3 million Palestinians from Gaza. A few days ago, it became known that the U.S. is sending a second aircraft carrier and a strike force to the eastern Mediterranean to prevent hostile actions against Israel and any attempt to spread the war after the attack by Hamas. The USS Eisenhower and its escort ships will join first aircraft carrier deployed in the region since Hamas since their deadly attack on October 7th. The U.S. announced on Saturday the deployment of the F-15E fighter jets and the A-10 jets to the Middle East region. The movement of warplanes from the 40, 494th Expeditionary Fighter Squadron and the 354th Expeditionary Fighter Squadron, respectively, strengthens the U.S. posture and enhances air operations throughout the Middle East. Now, the U.S., it says here, the U.S. can attack Iran. So since the middle of the century, the United States has, if not provoked, initiated, participated indirectly in Ukraine or directly in most military conflicts around the world and certainly tried to get the maximum benefit from them. In this case, the United States could take advantage of the Palestinian-Israel conflict to attack its longtime bitter rival, Iran. The United States can use this conflict as a pretext to attack Iran, which in one way or another supports Hamas. Um, this situation has definitely, definitely Escalated. Then I got another one from War News. War News is kicking out news like it seems like every hour now. This says with the reputation of the Yom Kippur War, Egypt and Jordan has threatened Israel if it proceeds with ethnic cleansing of the of the Gaza Strip and attempts to relocate 2.3 million Palestinians to the Sinai Peninsula. Earlier, both Israel's former Deputy Foreign Minister Danny Ayalan and Israel's current Foreign Minister Eli Cohen talked about annexing parts of Gaza and relocating Palestinians to Sinai. This is right out of the pages of the Bible. At the end of the war, not only will Hamas no longer be in Gaza, but the territory of Gaza will also be reduced. Jordan's foreign minister responded by saying any attempt by Israel to forcefully displace the Palestinians means war for Jordan. This is striking given that Jordan has been one of the closest Arab states to Israel since the normalized relations in 1994. The Yom Kippur War, or Fourth Arab-Israel War, took place in October, almost a year ago when they started this war two weeks ago in 1973 was the long was the last of the series of Arab Israel wars the war was fought from October 6th to the 26th in 1973 by a coalition of Arab states under the leadership of Egypt and Syria against Israel So now the Egyptian president warned that evacuating Gazan residents would drag Egypt into war and added that displacing Palestinians would set an undesirable precedent. What happened back in the book of Genesis when they were in the uh, when they were in Egypt? 
This is, this is almost like history repeating itself. The idea of displacing the Palestinians in Sinai means dragging Egypt into war against Israel. Israel is essentially asking Egypt to, mul to uh, <laughs> mutilate itself territorially by giving ground for an establishment of the future state of the Palestinians in Sinai. Wow. Wow. <laughs> the Egyptian president, Abdul Fattah al-Sisay, you can say his name is something else, Sissy or whatever, that's what it sounds like, that's what it looks like to me, expressed today the vertical opposition of the scenario circulated in the last few hours regarding the movement of the residents of Gaza to the Sinai Desert as a consequence, consequence of the war in Israel. This this is this is bad. <laughs> this is this is this is such it's prophecy. It's prophecy. Now I gotta give you let me see what else came out today. Okay, the US is and this is another war news article. The U.S., after sending two aircraft carriers and their battle groups, is also sending the USS Sixth Fleet flagship, uh, flagship command and control ship, Mount Whitney, the LCC-20, to the Eastern Mediterranean Sea. The USS Mount Whitney departed uh, Grotta, Italy, today to support U.S. operations in the Eastern Mediterranean Sea. This thing is going to blow up real fast. Give it about, they're talking about 72 hours. Now, let me give you what Hal Turner just wrote. Um, Where is it? Um, I just read about this, um, about the Kenzo, about his uh, Kenzo. Jordan's foreign ministry, and I just read some of that in uh, war news. They're also saying here, Hal Turner is also saying, we, we will consider forcing Palestin uh, Palestinians to migrate again as a Cassius Belay. In other words, a cause for war. So to say this thing has not increased over the last few hours, <laughs> it has definitely increased. Give me one second. Sorry about that. Um, the Mount Whitney is the most advanced command, control, coordination, communications, and intelligence ship ever built. The fact that they're sending this ship out <laughs> means that this thing has definitely, definitely, like I just said, escalated. Um, I think Zero Hedge, I think it was Zero Hedge that had actual audio of them admitting that it was them, Gaza or Hamas, that sent the rocket, not Israel. But, like I said, it don't matter now. It don't matter now. Because... This is a crap storm, and this is one more excuse to not support Israel, of course. So that's what's happening right now. So they're sending another ship. Uh, the U.S. is sending another ship. It says, um, the U.S., Britain, and Saudi Arabia, the U.S., Britain, and Saudi Arabia are issued a travel advisory asking all their citizens to leave Lebanon right now. The U.S. State Department issued a travel advisory yesterday warning Americans against traveling to Lebanon. The U.S. warned American citizens not to travel there and the State Department authorized the departure of non-emergency government personnel due to the unprecedented security situation in the country. 
The Saudi em uh, embassy in Le Lebanon said it was closely monitoring developments in southern Le Lebanon, calling on all citizens to observe the travel bans. <clears throat> Iran warns Israel that it is running out of time. Time is running out. <coughs> Excuse me. So when um, Biden was traveling on Air Force One to Tel Aviv, the Iranian minister was in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, as part of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation meeting. Iran's foreign minister said that time is running out for Israel. The message of the Iranian foreign minister, however, echoes the one posted by Tehran's embassy in Syria, saying time is up in Hebrew. However, the Iranian minister's visit to Saudi Arabia after the Gaza hospital bombing shows a remarkable display of unity between the two former sworn enemies. So I'm going to link all of this in the description box. And if anything else comes up whatsoever. Well, wait a minute. Hold on there. Something did just come up. The U.S. military has intercepted. Multiple aerial, aerial drones targeting a troop stationed in Iraq early this morning. A U.S. official said, as U.S. officials are on heightened alert for potential attacks on American forces in the Middle East, U.S. forces shot down three drones in Iraq where 2,500 American troops were stationed. No Americans were injured in the incident. The first such attack on U.S. positions in Iraq in at least nine months, said the official. The official declined to say who was responsible for the attack. So again, I will keep you informed as to whatever else is going on. But uh, this thing is definitely escalated. <laughs> Thank you.